I know this is a stretch, but a lot of you requested that I react to the medical scenes of the Twilight series saga. And I haven't watched it yet, so I'm preparing to watch it all for you. Hope I don't regret this. Let's get started. Beep Everyone in this series looks so pale. I'm screening all of them for anemia. Chronic blood loss, B12 deficiency. I'm getting a CBC at the very least. Oh, someone's been doing tricep extensions. I'm surprised after this movie, he didn't do a jaw trainer ad on TikTok. Not that they work, but I'm just saying like in Hollywood, it makes sense. I would say she's underacting, but sometimes in moments of shock, people do get confused and dazed and don't know how to react. The whole deer and headlights thing that we make fun of actually does happen to humans as well. You and I are gonna talk, you all right? I'm fine, Dad, calm down. I'm sorry, Bella, I tried to stop. He tried to stop by turning the van sideways? Thought it wasn't his fault. He could've been killed, you understand that? Yes, but I wasn't, so. You can kiss your license goodbye. Whoa, fancy resident coming in with the teal shirt and teal tie and pale skin. My God, his skin is so cyanotic. Like if I just looked at this person, I would guess their hemoglobin is like a five, which is like in desperate need of a transfusion. Hi, sisters. Ah! Isabella. Bella. Oh, Bella, looks like you took quite a spill. How do you feel? Good. Well, that's not really how we perform a history. We usually say, what happened? What do you remember? Did you lose consciousness? Does something hurt? My guy, at least fake it like you're a doctor. Don't just put on a white coat on your teal shirt and slick back your hair and think you're the, the vampire, king vampire of the hospital. <laughs> that climax did not work. <laughs> You might experience some. Okay, so this whole moving the pen back and forth is like a little weird. The purpose of using the pen light in one eye is to see if the pupil reacts to the light. So technically when you shine a bright light into a pupil, it shrinks. And when you move the light away and it gets darker, it expands. Now, if that's not happening or you have a blown pupil on one side, that could be a sign of a head injury. The fact that he's going like this, like you're never really gonna <laughs> see whether or not the pupil's reacting. Disorientation, but your vitals look good. No signs of any head trauma. He failed med school 101 in Vampire Diaries 103. Is disorientation not a symptom of head injury? To me it is. And because she had a pretty serious accident, I'm probably scanning her. Instead he kept you this fragile little human. It's cruel really. Oh, what did he do? What did he do? Did he stab her? Stomped on her leg, her lower leg. Oh, stomping on the lower leg. There's a lot of nerves there. A lot of pain, a lot of blood vessels. Oh! You save her, Rob. I'm sorry. Yeah. Back injury. T12 vertebral fracture. But don't vampires heal really quickly so my medical diagnoses need not apply. <laughs> That's a bad place for a cut. That's where the femoral artery is. You can bleed heavy. I didn't see how high it was on the leg, but that could be bad. <laughs> oh, stop biting her. Did he bite her? Does that count? Does she, be, is it like, is like walking dead? Not all the way, so you have to give time for the the poison to leach. It's actually quite similar for a tick bite. A lot of people see a tick land on them, maybe bites them, and they're like, oh my God, I might have Lyme disease. But actually a tick has to be attached for like 24 to 48 hours in order for Lyme disease to actually spread. The bacteria that causes Lyme disease lives inside the tick's gut and actually takes time for it to spread into your own bloodstream. Femoral has been severed, she's losing too much blood. Look at this, he's like a doctor and everything. Oh, it's that same dude. This is where a tourniquet comes in real handy because the purpose of the tourniquet really is to buy you more time. It's to clamp off the bleeding from above, meaning closer to the heart, so that would be higher up on the leg. You tie off that circulation, get her to the hospital, get the trauma surgeons in there, the vascular surgeons. They do their little stuff. And by little stuff, I mean they actually fix the injury and boom, the leg works again. And so does the rest of her body. Tie it above my head. Oh, look at them listening to the doctor advice. 
But see, they should have called 911 before doing this because it's gonna actually they could fly and stuff. So this my simple human mind is thinking like ambulance, and they're like, we're just gonna fly. <sighs> so he's not biting her. He's he's sucking out the venom. This is why that device that some people use on like mosquito bites to try and like suck out the inflammation, like they think it works, but that's not really why it works. I actually reviewed it in a whole Amazon video. It was a weird video because I reviewed a lot of weird products. Ooh! Oh, that's a good suction. I hate paper cuts. They're so small and yet they're so problematic. They allow infection in, but you don't think they're that serious, so you don't necessarily go to cover them. And then if you get a little lemon juice in there or something acidic, it burns like <sighs> I'm watching this and there's vampires diving on the little blood splat. And all I'm thinking about is whenever I drop a crumb on the floor and Bear sees it and he just attacks it in very much the same way. I see a lot of relation to that. Why doesn't this specific vampire react to the blood this way? Like, how is he so comfortable becoming a doctor, not wanting every time he's doing a little blood draw that he's like, let me get a little. And uh, wait, hold on a second. Aren't vampires worried about bloodborne diseases? HIV, syphilis, hepatitis. These are problems that like you should think about as a vampire. I never wanted to have a party. It's not your fault. You gotta take out the glass. Foreign bodies, first thing you're doing, you're removing them, but you're also just washing it out with warm water. That's an important part of it, or cool water. How do you do it? Years and years of practice. And cool contact. I knew who I wanted to be. I wanted to help people. That's nice. Brings me happiness. He's doing sutures. I wouldn't necessarily do them. Sometimes you have to let wounds close by what we call secondary intention, which means that if they're dirty wounds, you may want to let them heal from inside out as opposed to closing them because sometimes you could trap bacteria and infection in there. That long hair look was not a good look for him. Hit the brake. Whoa! I hope she didn't fracture anything. <laughs> Are you trying to get yourself killed? No, not again. No, forget it. She's bleeding. She has a head injury. Don't let her go back on the motorcycle. Oh yeah, he's flexing on her. My guy, that was so unnecessary. You did not need to dab the blood away like that. You could have just taken the shirt and just gone like this. Feel that? Flesh and blood and warmth. I'm gonna use that as a pickup line. Let's see if it works. Bella, where the hell have you been, Luca? <laughs> oh, she wants vampire. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Why did it hurt her so much to punch him? Because he's a wolf? Yeah. I kissed Bella and she broke her hand. Oh, you know what's really dangerous? Not only getting a boxer's fracture, the fifth meta, uh, uh, metacarpal here, but also getting a fight bite. And I don't think she got it there because I think his mouth was closed. But if you hit someone on their teeth, that is so problematic for the hand because it's usually very deep, number one. When the person relaxes their hand, that infection can spread to the joint of the hand and therefore cause all sorts of problems like a septic arthritis with like tendon involvement. It's so destructive that you actually need very, very thorough care initially and follow up to make sure that the infection isn't spreading. The human mouth is actually quite dirty. It's a polymicrobial environment, we call it. There's like 50 different types of bacteria in the mouth. That was cool. Your rib is cracked. <laughs> what was that an image of? What in the world am I looking at? Is that even a human? That's her abdomen. You haven't punctured anything. Yet. What do you mean she hasn't punctured anything yet? The vampire baby? The vampire baby needs to stop performing intra-abdominal trauma. It's breaking her bones now. It's crushing you from the inside out. That's how I feel about my long work days. <laughs> Carla, I'll tell her what you told me. I feel
fetus isn't compatible with your body. Oh. It's too strong. It's like an RH incompatibility. It won't allow you to get the nutrition you need. It's starving you by the hour. I can't stop it and I can't slow it down. At this rate, your heart will give out before you can deliver. See, I want to fact check this real bad, but I'm not sure if there's vampire human baby incompatibility syndrome. Ginger ale? For the nausea? Oh! Oh! Did her back just break? Can someone hold her? Why are they watching her? Oh, her patella! Does she have like weak, brittle bones, like osteopetrosis? Yeah, Carlos said the placenta must have detached. Oh, is she losing a lot of blood? Because that's how you would know. There's actually a unique condition where the placenta can come off the uterus and obviously placental separation is gonna be a lot of blood, potential injury to not only the, the fetus or the baby being delivered, but also to the mom. But then there's also the situation of placenta previa where the placenta is actually on the lower portion of the uterus where it can even block the cervix where the baby normally would come out. In those situations, Obviously, we're going for a C-section. He's coming as fast as he can. We'll but... have to do it. Do what? What are they gonna do? <gasps> no! She... How... Okay. Let the morphine spray. There's no time. He's dying. Get him out! Now! Let the morphine spray. Oh my god, are they just... What about her bladder? You gotta be careful. Oh my god. She doesn't know where she's cutting. Oh no, she's gonna eat the scalpel. Get her out of here. This is bad vampire healthcare. The amount of blood loss she has, I don't know how long she's gonna last. They need to get her an IV, get her some fluids, get her a transfusion. Oh. Oh, is he eating the baby? I delivered 30 plus babies. I've assisted in dozens more. Never seen a surgeon do that. I felt like that was not just unethical, but unconstitutional as well. <laughs> she's sweating because she's getting a fever from all these bites. I just said earlier, there's 50 different types of bacteria in the mouth and they keep biting her. Maybe they need to stop beating on the poor girl and the vampire baby maybe needs to stop beating on her so that the placenta can stay attached. Oh my God, are babies actually all vampires? Oh Cause they technically live off the blood of their mother because the placenta feeds the baby, brings nutrients, detoxes the baby. <gasps> we need to make some phone calls. Babies are this changes a lot. Yeah, skin to skin is important. This is actually a medically evidence-based practice where it creates bonding between the mother and the baby. So we do recommend this. Mom's clearly really sick though and febrile. Like we gotta get antibiotics, like systemic IV antibiotics going. I can't even think about all the bacteria that's flowing through her blood. Like I think if we were to take a sample of her blood and culture and do a blood culture, we'd see all sorts of bacteria grow, like trees of bacteria grow on the growth plate. By the way, here's what a growth plate looks like when we do a blood culture. Oh, what happened? What's, what's happening? Who's bleeding, who's dying? I heard a Oh, is she dying? She looks frail. Bella? Bella? Oh no, Bella. oh no. No, we don't need to do mouth to mouth anymore, bro. She she was already breathing right before that, so she already had some residual oxygen in her. So all you have to do is do chest compressions, chest compression, chest compression. If she's unresponsive, with no pull. Those are really bad chest compressions. My guy, you can't take your hands off the chest when you're doing chest compressions. Oh, what is that? Is that epinephrine? This is definitely not what's happening. But in advanced cardiac life support, when you can't bring someone back, you're doing chest compressions to buy them time. You would give epinephrine, the medicine that would hopefully restart the heart, into an IV. But back in the day, or if we didn't have IVs, we would literally take it and put it into the heart. And actually in Pulp Fiction, there was like a whole scene when they shot Uma Thurman. She was dying from an overdose of heroin and you don't need to give naloxone into the heart ever. You give it intramuscularly or IV. Welcome to Dr. X to Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my venom. Oh, that was the venom. That's a different advanced cardiac life support. And the reason, by the way, we don't do it intracardiac is because it stops us from doing chest compressions. We want to keep doing chest compressions. It's supposed to be working. Bro, the reason it's not working is because you're not circulating the goddamn medication. It needs to be done with the rhythm. Staying alive, staying alive. You can't just go. 
It's not working. Clearly they didn't watch my TikTok live with the American Heart Association or visit one of my booths that are in airports across the United States with the American Heart Association teaching people how to do chest compression. Is he disgusted at the situation that she's dying or his chest compressions? Because I can't tell. Isn't he a vampire? Can't he like spit on her and bring her back? Oh my God, look at those myelin sheets. Neovascularization happening. I'm pulling out all the medical terminology. Those are actual real medical words. Oh, that, this is like a Gatorade commercial. Ooh, ooh, that was cool. Oh, you saw that? Her sternum just was like, what's up? We're back together now. Since her body completely healed, you'd think the bags under her eyes would go away too. Oh, they do. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Oh, she's a vampire now. Would've been cool if she just said, chew poppy. <laughs> Click here to check out TikToks that I even struggled to explain. Really worth watching. And huge thanks to r slash Twilight for helping us put this video together. As always, stay happy and healthy.